All right, guys. So there's something um, also observed in um, patients that have Parkinson's. All right. So this is known as a cogwheeling. All right. So cogwheeling is like um, they call it cogwheel because the literal cogwheels they come into each other. They lose. It's like they come. They lose. There's like rigidity. Do you understand? But this rigidity is not continuous as in lead pipe rigidity. Cogwheeling rigidity is like it's coming, it's going, it's coming, it's going. Do you understand? So let's describe this. We get to look at the definition of cogwheel effect or cogwheel rigidity or cogwheeling that is seen in Parkinson's. We look at the causes, look at the symptoms, look at the diagnosis and the possible treatments for this word, cogwheeling. Okay? So meaning of cogwheel, cogwheel effect, which is seen in Parkinson's disease. So cogwheel effect in Parkinson's disease is also what is known as what? Cogwheel rigidity. All right? Cogwheel effect, cogwheel rigidity, cogwheeling. These are different names that they actually cause the condition, right? So it's a type of muscle stiffness that causes a jerky or ratchet-like movement when the limb is passively moved. So when they say passive motion, is when you're actually what, moving the limb for the patient. When it is active motion, that's when the patient is moving it by their self. You get. So this phenomenon is often what observed during a physical examination when a doctor flexes and extends a patient's limb. So there's a video where I spoke about the differences between cogwheel effect and or cogwheel rigidity and leg pipe rigidity. They are quite different. Lead pipe rigidity is like what? A continuous rigidity. Why cogwheel rigidity is like it's coming and going, it's just like the cogwheels, they enter, they come out, they enter, they come out. You understand? Hence the name. So, what are the causes? It could be dopamine deficiency. So, Parkinson's disease is characterized by a loss of a dopamine producing neurons in the brain, particularly in the basal ganglia, all right? Which are involved in controlling movements, all right? It could be due to altered muscle tone. So lack of dopamine disrupts the normal regulation of our muscle tone, leading to increased resistance to passive movement and characteristic jerky motion that we notice in this cogwheel effect. What are the symptoms? There'll be ratcheting move motion, okay? So when the limb is moved, it moves in small jerky increments, similar to the motion of what? Mechanical gears, all right? It's moving and coming, moving and becoming rigid. It's relaxing, becoming rigid, it's relaxing, becoming rigid, all right? Stiffness, uh, the muscle feels tight and resistance to motion, pain and discomfort. The rigidity can cause what? Discomfort and pain in the affected limb, okay? So how can we be able to diagnose this um, cochlear effect? Uh, for, you could do physical examination of the patient where the doctor will actually move the patient limb to check for presence of what cochlear rigidity. Other tests include imaging studies, neurological examinations, which may be used to confirm the disease of what Parkinson's disease. So if you see a cochlear effect, next is trying to confirm if there's Parkinson's disease, right? Treatments. Medications will give dopamine agonists, drugs that are basically what replace dopamine. Okay, uh, like dopamine agonists, labeled dopa, and other medications can help manage the symptoms. Physical therapy, exercise, exercise to improve flexibility and strength can be beneficial to you. All right, the deep brain stimulation in severe cases, surgical interventions like what deep brain stimulations can be considered. All right. So cogwheel effect is a diagnostic feature of Parkinson's disease and help, help the healthcare professionals to access what? Severity and progression of the condition, right? So that's the meaning of what cogwheel effect can, that can be seen in Parkinson's disease, also known as, also known as cogwheel rigidity or cogwheeling.